My name's Monica, and this is my husband, Tim. Together, we have this little guy, Carter. And now, we're just trying to figure out life. Timon life. Just like that awesome new intro said, today we are talking doc band or plagiocephaly treatment, infant helmet. Um, they're all kind of the same thing and we'll get into that. Um, but if you've clicked on this video, it means um, maybe a doctor has talked to you about your child needing uh, a doc band or a helmet, um, or they have plagiocephaly, or you've seen a baby wearing one of these helmets and you just want to know more. Um, so in this video, I'm gonna do my best. Um, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six-ish points <laughs> that I wanna make and answer some of the most um, kind of asked questions that we've gotten as parents um, who our son has had. Uh, doc band treatment and has now finished it. So I will be sharing some before and after photos uh, at the end of this video. So please stay through the end of this video for that and you'll be able to see um, before and after and I'll answer the big question of if it was worth it. Um, so let's dive in to what is a doc band? Uh, what's it for and why do babies get one? So a doc band is that helmet that you see. I'll pop some pictures up here. Um, it's made out of kind of like a lightweight styrofoam fiberglass kind of material. Um, it's not sharp, it's very smooth, very, very lightweight. Um, and so what it does is it, you wear it, the baby wears it 23 hours a day, so you only take it off when they bathe or um, we had to make some adjustments here because we're in Arizona and it's almost summertime. So we would try to maybe space out little bits of that hour so he could get some relief throughout the day to you know wipe down his head from sweat and stuff. So 23 hours a day it's on and it helps shape the head and I'll get a little bit more into that. The baby would wear the doc band um, if they have plagiocephaly, which or another word for that is a flat spot. Um, our son had a significant flat spot or flat side of his head um, and it was the back side and on the side by his ear. It was very flat and very um, asymmetrical compared to the rest of his head and we believe he had these flat spots because he had trouble turning his neck when he was born. That's called torticollis or a stiff neck. Um, he was born right at 37 weeks so this can happen in more preterm babies. Um, it, it, it happens just naturally with babies because of the way they're positioned um, in utero and as their birth, you know, their head shapes <laughs> to be able to get out. Um, so it's all natural and it happens to a lot of babies. I think they say one in four babies have plagiocephaly. Um, in our case, our son did. So he got the helmet to correct those flat spots. Um, and the reason why we chose to do this treatment because it is an optional treatment and not all insurance policies cover it um, we were thankful that our insurance did cover it but we chose to do this because we knew it was severe enough on the one side that it could affect his head shape for the rest of his life um, you know once those bones fuse there's no real movement that you can make happen um, so we knew that it would affect his ability to, you know, wear helmets and things like that safely, you know, moving on in life, you know, riding a bike or a skateboard or whatever it may be. There can also be complications um, with the alignment of facial structures because the shape of the skull impacts the shape of a jaw or the face. And I'll point that out in the before and after pictures, but my family has uh, several people who have had jaw surgery because um, their bottom jaw is not aligned where it needs to be and it causes pain and, and all sorts of just really horrible things. So I knew because that ran in my family and along with making sure he's safe wearing helmets and things for the rest of his life, that's why we chose to do the treatment. So how long was the treatment? Um, Car we started this process, we went to his four month checkup because we had been monitoring the flat spots and we were trying doing tummy time and you know all these different exercises with him and it didn't imp improve. So we went to his four month appointment and that's when the doctor formally gave us the recommendation to go to Cranial Technologies, which is the company that does it here in Phoenix. Um, and they do free consultations. So we went and we did the consultation and they said he was 
severe enough that he would need one. So we started that process about four, four months old. Um, it took about a month to get everything sorted out with insurance. Um, we didn't need a referral, but the company wanted us to have a referral. It was just, it was a little bit of a mess. Um, so that was like the only like frustrating part about this because if he would have gotten it sooner, he might not have had to wear the dock man as long um, because we didn't actually get him into the dock man until he was almost six months old, um, which I know that doesn't seem like a ton of time, but in baby time and growing time, that is a lot. And um, so we got him in the dock band. We finally got it. Um, it only took about a week to manufacture. Um, and then he got the dock band and he wore it um, until he was eight months. Uh, so he wore it about two months. I know that, again, it does not seem like a long time and some babies wear it a lot longer. So we're very fortunate. Um, I just know with the heat, it was a little frustrating because we could have kept him out of it um, probably about half that time. He might have only needed it for a month if we had gotten into him, got it on him sooner, <laughs> if that makes sense. But in all, he took did about two months of treatment. And so what did that treatment involve? Um, he wore the dock band again 23 hours a day. Um, we mostly took it off um, at night when we bathed him. We gave him that hour break before we put it on him for bed. Um, then we also went to the cranial technologies office every two weeks. So every Friday for two months, uh, every other Friday for two months, we would go to cranial technologies. And what they had to do is um, make sure the band was fitting right because <laughs> I will tell you I was amazed at how quickly his head grew. So they give you the band and it has a layer of foam on the inside. And what they do every two weeks is they go in and kind of scoop some of that foam out because the band in a nutshell is holding the head or the skull, you know, where they don't want it to grow. It's not pushing, it's not pulling, any of that. What it's doing is creating a barrier. So on his, in his case, his head was, was flat on this side. So it was holding the spot that was already grown out to where we could grow out those flat spots. Um, so they had to give growing room on the side where it was growing to where we wanted it to continue to round out um, every two weeks. Cause it's amazing how quickly he would grow. Okay, so now to the part I think everybody's been waiting for in this video, the before and afters. Okay, so right now you are looking at the before and after front view of Carter's beautiful face. Um, so I want to point out some of the features that changed by using the helmet. Um, you might think that the helmet is on his head, but it actually affects the face. And like I mentioned before, we were worried about jaw structure and things like that. And the dog band actually addressed that in Carter's case. So if you look on the left side here, this is the before. And right here, you'll notice that there's some drooping in his face. Um, it kind of comes down and then this side is lifted up. So his face was drooping on the left side um, before the helmet. Afterwards, if you notice, it's very round. He still has slight, some slight drooping, but it's not as profound, especially here under the eye and in the cheek. Um, so it really rounded out and made his face a little bit more symmetrical. Um, and you can see it also in the eye. He drooped here in the eye. It was not as even with the other one, and now his eyes are very level. And it's amazing that the dock band was what helped that. So moving down, um, we are looking at the back view of his head. This one, you can't really see it as much, um, but on this side, you can see the shape of his head is indented here. That's where he had the most drastic flat spot. And look at this, complete round, complete round, all the way around. So we're gonna keep going. Um, and this is that side that we were, we're talking about the drooping, um, his chin and jaw. Um, but let me let me get to this is this is where we see kind of the most improvement. It's the vertex or the top view. So it's as if you're looking down, like the god view, I would call it. Um, you're looking down from the top, down, and you can see this is where he had a lot of the. Um, the flat spot. His was mostly on the bottom, but I'll get to that in a second. Um, the base of his head, I should say. Um, but you can still see how it was indented here. And this is a nice 
round it out. It's still a little asymmetrical and that's, we talked about that through his treatment. Um, we could have had him wear the dock band a lot longer, um, but we felt that he was in a place that it was no longer a profound issue. So he has a little bit of asymmetrical um, shape here, but it's still drastically more round than where it was in the beginning. So this is where I think we see the most improvement for Carter. Um, this would be looking from, if you were his neck, looking up to his head, if that makes sense. Um, so this is the, um, this would be, I think his, oh my gosh, I'm directionally challenged. But again, this is that same, the same side, but the base of his head, this is where he had that flat spot, especially in the ear. And even his ears weren't aligned. Um, this ear was very drooped because of that, that structure here in this back quarter. Um, but look at how beautifully rounded out that is. Isn't that amazing? Um, and you can even see here um, at the base, there was some, um, not, it wasn't very symmetrical. And look at this, perfect symmetric nose, very straight down the center here. The ears are proportioned out now and his head is just so beautifully round. Like, look at that. Um, and again, if you go back to my original video, I gave um, a look at the measurements that they share with you of how they determine. Um, it's the cephalic index. Um, it's basically determining how, <laughs> kind of determining how lopsided the baby's head is. Um, and they do asymm asymmetry measurements and things like that. Um, so he didn't have a very drastic cephalic index before, um, but he was kind of moving towards that middle range and he's he's dropped 1.5, which I think is still a great improvement. And then as far as asymmetry, this is where he, he made the most improvement. He was at a 5.0 before and he changed that to only a two point difference. Um, and this is, so this is measuring from the front to the back diagonally. Um, so he was right on, he was classified as a moderate deformity before, and now he's drastically brought that down. And the same with this one, um, it was a 3.6 before, and now it's a 1.4. As you can see, he was, he was on the very moderate range, so that's why his treatment was so short. He only needed one dock band. There are cases when these, um, I don't like calling it deformity, but these spots um, or flat spots are so drastic that um, you know they're over here in the red and they're severe and that they need longer times to change. He was already only in that moderate range and didn't need as long to change. It could have been a little bit shorter even if we had gotten it in, him into the dock band sooner. So I think my advice on that part is if you think your baby is going to need one, do the consultation sooner rather than later. So let me answer the like number one question that I get when I tell people he had a dock band is, was it worth it? Um, 100% in my book, I honestly think it was so worth it for us. We got the results we were hoping for um, and, and he didn't mind wearing it, honestly. And I think it also helped with the timing that we got it done before the middle of the summer. I would recommend if you're talking about it with your doctor, go get the consultation sooner rather than later because that's what kind of delayed our treatment a little bit. You have to give time for insurance. You have to give time for them to actually make the band. Um, we have a manufacturer facility here in Phoenix. So again, it only took about a week for us to get it once we were through the insurance process. If you guys have any more questions about our dock band journey, um, our infant helmet journey, our plagiocephaly journey, please let us know. Um, drop them in the comments below. Um, do you want to know um, cleaning tips? Because cleaning it is a beast. Um, it smells like a cast after time. So we found some tips and tricks to make it smell better because you can only put certain things on it. Um, decorating dock bands, we had some fun um, customizing his helmet. Um, so let me know what, do you want to see more videos on this topic? Um, comment them down below. And also, you know what, please subscribe, subscribe to our channel so you get notified when we post more videos. So thanks so much for watching this video and we'll catch you next time.